Hello folks, I am back with some firearms information and as by the title you see here, it says shooting with progressive lenses, uh, aka known as bifocals. Uh, I saw a video earlier with uh, 32 Icon and she was talking about shooting with red dots and the pros and cons with it. And then after that, I saw the video from Big Johnson Guns and Gears talking about optics uh, uh, and how he is having a problem with his uh, condition of having astigmatism in his eye. Uh, I also have astigmatism in my eye, and sometimes it basically affects my shooting. And I've been planning to do this video for some time, but I never got around to it. So I figured I'd just uh, chime in on my points about the astigmatism and also wearing uh, progressive lenses. Uh, first of all, I'm going to say as a disclaimer, number one, I am not an optometrist and I'm not a visionary uh, professional. Uh, secondly, I'm going to mention that these are basically based off my experiences and my own only. Yours are going to vary drastically because everybody has a different situation. So uh, let me bring these down. There will be no eyeglasses uh, uh, injured or hurt in this uh, video, but um, what I'm going to mention about uh, these glasses, these are my older ones. I've recently went to the optometrist and uh, got my prescription upgraded. Uh, I've been wearing glasses since the second grade. And then and uh, later on, I believe in my 30s, I was diagnosed with astigmatism. Uh, when I got into my fifth, uh, when I actually turned 50, uh, I be, was told that I would have to have bifocals or what they call today progressive lenses. I guess they use the term progressive lenses not to hurt us older guys uh, with the term bifocals. But what bifocals were, were eyeglasses that had a crude line that went across. And I'm going to kind of demonstrate here. Hopefully I can get this right. Uh, bifocals had a, a crude line that went across the front. So I'm not sure if this is going to show up very well and it's probably not going to show up but it is it was a crude line that was on the on the lens and you could see that there was something different that there was a uh, there was a thicker part and then there was a um a lighter part and the thicker part was kind of like it was blurred now the thicker part was for people that uh, needed to read at the bottom. So you can see at the bottom where where everything was magnified if you were reading a newspaper or uh, a magazine or anything. The upper part of the lens was for regular seeing. And this is where it comes into with shooting with red dots. The problem with, with when you shoot with a red dot, you will probably get some type of uh, distortion in here now nowadays they make these um progressive lenses the line is invisible so when you have this little distortion in this area you're saying to yourself well what's wrong there's something blurry there that is because we, when you have these lenses there are two different lenses two different prescriptions so if your eye drifts it will cause some type of blurriness and i'm going to show you a crude drawing that i did and yeah, it looks like something somebody did this from uh, first grade or second grade. But it, imagine this as being your pupil of your eye. And there's the imaginary line right here. And then you have your upper lens and your lower lens. Sometimes when you're viewing uh, through these lenses, you will get distorted. And this is without a red dot. Uh, you could just be doing, going about your everyday moment. And you look right here. At the, and you'll be caught between the two lenses, which will cause a, a blurry spot. Uh, the, the reason why these lenses were made, so like I said, you could read at the bottom and you could see regular. Uh, a lot of people that have stigmatisms you, uh, use um, bifocal lenses or progressive lenses. So that becomes a issue or a learning curve. So you would have to concentrate your pupil to be on this plane when you want to regularly see and concentrate when you want to read to move 
uh, move down to the lower end. So when you are shooting a firearm, what happens is you want to get the right focal plane. You want that pupil to be right up here when you are acquiring your sights. Now, with the what compounds this error is when you have a red dot. I don't know if you can see it or not. That the red that now what happens is when you have a red dot, you got to have that upper end depending on your vision or how close the target is, you have to have that upper end of your lens to see that red dot. If you can see it on the camera, I'm not sure if you can see it. So if the, so you will have to have your focus, your pupil above the imaginary line to see that red dot. Now, the other thing is, is that at closer distances, this might blur out. So you might want to use the lower end of the lens it depends on your vision and that's that's where there's a little bit of a division where it comes from one person to the next uh the other thing is uh with this is that when you're shooting your targets it you'll you can sometimes get a starburst effect and this is what people with uh stigmatisms have. They have that starburst effect. So it's compound two times magnified, if you will, when you have uh, progressive lenses and if you have a stigmatism. So what I learned to do and what was recommended uh, by my optometrist is to turn down the, the intensity of the light so I would be able to see the target properly without getting a distorted view. Um, and when you use different optics, particularly if you're using a rifle optic, this is um, a really good optic, but um, this is my Strike Eagle uh, from uh, Vortex. The problem I had with the Strike Eagle was when I put, this works two ways. You can put the illumination on like a red dot, but the problem I had to learn with this is to turn the intensity down or else the entire uh, target would be covered or I would get that blurred uh, starburst effect. And I'm not going to be able to do it on here, but I'm just letting you see this. Uh, what happens a lot of times when you have progressive lenses or if you have astigmatism, you're going to have to basically accommodate your eye to... Uh, the lens, uh, whether you're using a small red dot like this or whether you're using the rifle uh, mounted uh, red dots or a scope. So sometimes it's going to vary and you're going to have to find out uh, through your optometrist and through training your eye how to use the red, uh, the, the red dot uh, without getting that starburst effect. Um, uh, I have a 2 MOA and 3 MOA, and I believe this is the 3 MOA, if I'm correct. Yes, the 3 MOA. Uh, I notice a lot of times that when I use this uh, particular um, red dot, I have to put it on its smallest setting for the size as well as the light intensity, and that decreases the issues. But again, for you guys that do have bifocals you're going to have to work a little bit uh a little bit harder another problem is when you have the ear muscle on or whether you're using different um headsets or uh, or plugs when you're uh when you're shooting at the range you have to worry about when you place that rifle not to distort your your eyeglasses because if you're if you have your eyeglasses on and you have a rifle on and you want to get that cheek weld in, it'll push the lens and sometimes will distort your target. So you're going to have to work with that. Uh, find out what is a good cheek weld uh, when you're doing that. Uh, also, when you're doing that, you especially particularly with a handgun. Um, and this goes for whether or not you have a red dot on or not. You want to be able to put this firearm at number one at eye level. Uh, there's a lot of times where I see people, and I was guilty of this. So, so uh, a trainer told me, stop having the firearm low because then that's why my shots were coming low. 
try to bring this firearm up, especially on a handgun, up to eye level. And when you get the eye level, it will help with your focusing as well as it may, it may or may not help with um, distortion as well as helping you with your stigmatism issues that could result. So getting back to this diagram, uh, it, like I said, if you notice when you go to an optometrist, the optometrist puts a ruler on your nose or whatnot. The ruler is basically measuring the distance from uh, your pupils, from wh whether it goes from whether it's a center. I can't say if the pupil is centered, but whether or not your eye is centered or not. So that's why they put that ruler there. That ruler is measuring the distance between let's say from here to here and whether up and down and that will vary depending on certain styles of glasses you wear because sometimes they'll tell you you can't wear a certain style of glasses but uh you're going to have to experiment i can't give you any answers that's something you're going to have to work out with your optometrist but i would recommend that you try to if you are wearing progressive lenses or bifocals, just try to focus in on the upper portion or do what's best for you, especially when it comes to uh, your dot optics as well as your, uh, your long rifle optics. And it's going to take some time. It's going to take some trial and error. And that's, that definitely is going to be something that you'll have to work out. As far as the stigmatism problems are, where you have the starburst issues, uh, your optometrist is really going to have to work with you on that. You're going to have to, uh, for example, I recently picked up the Romeo 4S. Uh, sometimes those sites where you have that circular uh, thing going with the, and it has the uh, crosshairs you might you're you don't want anything to distort your entire view so you might want to figure out what's a good optic for your eye uh when it comes to something that's circular like that those are basically made for close quarters anyway but you still want to be able to have that your eye not being obstructed with anything that would be, let's say, obstructing your field of view too much. But you have to play around with intensity and so forth. Uh, well, that's all I have, folks. I hope this might help somebody out. Again, like I said, I am not a professional optometrist or anything like that. I'm just saying that this these are just some of the things that work for me. And for, uh, you need to consult an optometrist. I can't say that a month, uh, enough to figure out what's going to work for you as a shooter as well as your regular vision. Uh, with that said, happy shooting. Stay safe. Hashtag 2A.